Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to another video. Yesterday, Warframe celebrated their 2020 Tanacon and it was absolutely jam-packed with information, updates and plans for this year and the next. But before we continue, a lot of what you're about to go and see here could be work in progress, which means some things could easily be subject to change. So to keep things short and to the point, let's drive straight into it. Up first was the art panel. Now this is one of my favorites to watch and definitely a great way to build things up. The art team showcased the next three upcoming frames which are all aimed to release this year. Zaku, the community designed broken Warframe with his signature Cyan Dana. He's also going to be coming with his broken Warfan concept and this may include a fancy heavy attack. It's going to be throwing away a blade on the Warfan to reach further distances. An Alchemist Warframe which will be following the release of Zaku. He's looking like a mad scientist related theme. He comes equipped with a snake syringe on his left arm and we can expect this to be included within an ability of his. I'm excited to see and hear more on this one. And finally, Rave, a Warframe which started off as a fan-made concept from Liger but actually secured him a position in working for DE. Pablo and Scott have also been involved in this project, working things out with this Warframe. However, there isn't too much known publicly about this one currently, so I would be interested to hear your theories. What do you think we can go ahead and expect? Swiftly moving into a new wrist mounted sniper secondary. With a description like that, I guess we can expect it to pack quite a punch. Now it's been mentioned to have a special reload activity, which isn't yet finalized, but some ideas floating about is that when the clip is empty, to potentially throw at enemies and cause some kind of explosion or even causing a type of crowd control or potentially even a debuff. Up next, we've got plenty of deluxe skins to be released. Kicking it off, we have Hydrate Deluxe Skin with his signature coat based Cyandana wrapped around him and at the bottom of the coat it showcases a watery effect. Now this is all paired in a deluxe bundle with a squid looking theme for the Dairiga Sentinel Companion and a deluxe spear gun for your weaponry, assuming to be paired with weapons like Ferox and Scourge etc. Gara Deluxe Skin. Now this concept has floated around for a while and it's been looking ever so slick. It's no surprise for this reveal, but it's definitely a welcome one as we can see it here becoming more alive with the modeling process being added in. And finally, a meme for the ages has vanished with the all new Sephir Deluxe Skin. Now this has been a request for quite some time and it's almost looking very like Gundam themed, uh, but overall it's crispy. It's still in the works, but def this is definitely one to go and keep your eye on. I mentioned here for the Tenogen skins working their way in for the next round of Tenogen. Mostly sticking within the melee range, fists, machetes, claws, etc. But also some new ship skins we can see in the top left here. This also looks to include a new skin for Nora's ship reward and within Nightwave Series 3. A very unique bundle of weapon skins coming through here. A shotgun skin looking ever so confusing, but somewhat exciting at the same time. I'd love to go and see what happens with this. A pistol skin, and then followed by a melee whip skin to round off the bundle. There is also a Cyandana to somewhat match this entire set too. Here we have a new Nightwave Series 3 two-handed sword rewards, which is going to be tied into a reward for the upcoming Oricon member we see on our screen right here. This is the Glassmaker. Now we've heard a lot about him. He's a big part of the lore and another step closer to close enough the series of Nightwave 3. Up next are one of my favorite factions, the Infested. Now with Heart of Deimos right around the corner, expected to be released on August 25th of this month, we will be needing some new Infested enemies. So to start off, an Infested FEMA unit. Now this is again work in progress um, in terms of the name, but the unit itself is definitely all done. Very bulky looking, if the upper side of either arms are most likely its weak points to shoot at to slow it down. And then I think you then gotta go and tack the uh, dominant in the middle to go to finish it off. It can be quite close, uh, it can close quite a distance and give off some really big attacks. So do be careful, although he's chunky, he's quick. The infested bone blade unit. Now this is very big in comparison to the Warframe suits, shooting discs from the upper half of its body to cover long range and attacking with giant swooping tacks at anything that comes close within range of it. And next up we also have an infested ashen unit. Now this was shown during the teaser trailer of Heart of Deimos, skidding around and snapping at people. It looks like Randall out of Monsters Inc and acting like Sonic when it just rolls around. But all in all, it is a unique concept and I'm loving the direction of all of these infested enemies they are starting to showcase and the direction that the infested faction is starting to go in. 
a pair of infested claws are going to be added into the mix with a unique kind of passive towards it. The claws will extend almost double their size, double their distance when attacking, and they can also come alive with some very lively alien-like animations when wielded. There's also a new infested arm cannon to brother the already sentient arm cannon we have in the game named Shedu. So it sounded like this cannon could be crafted by Juggernaut components, but I'm unsure of the final direction it will be taken, but here it is. Also, an infested Cyandana will be added as well, bringing it to life with alien-like movement and some spores all coming out of it. It's going to be very interesting to see what this is like when it's finalized. There are also two new infested companions. Now, one of them is an infested Kubo, and it's looking very Egyptian-like. I'm not too sure how far in development these ones are, as we can see by the multiple choice of tails and heads. So it could be something that we choose ourselves and design. I, again, I am unsure here. And there's also an infested Kavat. It's looking very dog-like, but overall, love in the direction of the design. Accordingly, the head of the Kavat can actually split open, more likely when it's attacking. So that sounds really cool. And finally, to cap off the art panel and end it on a strong note, we have an infested domestic drone, an anti-cleaning drone, if you will. Uh, but he's doing his best, that's what it's all about. I absolutely love him, I'll definitely be picking one of these up, but the art panel was fantastic, shout out to all of them involved there. Now, just like the art team within Warframe, the sound team are an absolute delight to listen to. They were showcasing how they make and create infested related enemies or just enemies in general, and how that can be done using very unique sounds like rubber milling, scratching a cutting board, or even just aggressively peeling a sprout. It was a very interesting showcase. Unfortunately, I won't be going into it too, too much here. Um, and that also flows in towards the community art panel and the Tenno trivia. I apologize, I'm trying to keep the, the, the video as short as I possibly can here. Now the Tenno live and art panel is an awful lot to go ahead and go through, so I'm just gonna be sticking to that for now, but definitely shout out to all of them involved. The community art is absolutely amazing and the sound team are just on a whole nother level. Now, the big moment is here. I have watched Tenacon since the Plains of Idol on release and they are a treat. This one is up there with the greats such as the Fortuna reveal. Kicking it off, it is to be mentioned that again, one more time, Heart of Deimos is aimed to be released later this month on August the 25th. Along with this will include the new player experience. Now, this is huge for the community and for Warframe as a whole, I'll definitely be doing a video on this so you can expect that so I can go and help out new people get into the game. But for now, this is a massive step in the right direction. And of course, another meme has ended, the release of Hydroid Prime trailer is now upon us. It will be forever cemented as one of the most requested Prime trailers of all time. But it begins anew, and I believe to be expected that Prime trailers will be making their way as a comeback straight back into action from here onwards. Now on Tenno Live as well, Rebecca and the gang also showcased Zaku's The Broken Warframe's abilities. Now unfortunately, the passive wasn't announced, but this is what we have so far. His first ability, imbues Saku's weapons in his loadout with void damage. Now currently, this will not work against Eidolons, but it will more and most likely work against other enemies, and I would assume just casual sentence like Batalis, Conculus, and so forth, anything within the Murex and Condrex as well, I'm kind of assuming it would work all across there. Now the second ability, Zaku summons a swarm of void-like tendrils which will steal enemy weapons to encase him with those weapons that will now go and shoot back at other enemies. So it's kind of like summoning a turret, but by stealing their weapons. Now this ability is actually set to scale with enemy levels. So the damage output there seems to be very, very nice. As for his third ability, this is actually a free part ability. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down as clear as I can. The first part of it is called The Lost. He shoots a void beam, dealing damage to an enemy. If the enemy does not die, it then becomes stunned. The second is a cuse. Zaku creates an AoE radial fissure, which charms enemies. Now this is similar to Revenants in Thrall. And the third is Gaze. Any enemies in range will take a reduced resistance debuff so this will be weakening them whilst also using void like vines to wrap up a target 
Now his Vorf ability, Sake will actually shed and explode from his skin when cast. This looks weird, but any enemies nearby will take damage and become slowed. He can then recast this ability to get his broken body back. However, when in this skeletal form and shedded, he will actually become 75% more evasive to incoming attacks. Okay, so this one here is a big one. The new Helminth room has finally had a huge rework. This is exciting and has endless possibilities, so I'm going to try to explain this as clearly as I can. At the back of the room, you will notice the Helminth. By selecting him, you will be feeding him some of your materials you have already earned in game. These materials feed him and up the secretions of the Helminth. You can see the secretions on the right hand side, like oxides at the top, for example. So by feeding him alloy plates, you will be getting back oxides. Every resource in Warframe has been categorized and split between different secretions for the Helminth. The Helminth has things he likes and he dislikes, so you need to pay attention. If you haven't fed him a particular resource in a while, you will receive a bonus when feeding him. But if you keep feeding him the same thing, he may then become a little fussy. The concept of the Helminth is that he can inject your Warframe with another Warframe's ability. So you will substitute and replace one of your Warframe's abilities for another. When ranking up the Helminth, you can unlock some of its own abilities as well to put on a Warframe of your choice. To give you an example of how this works, you will need to sacrifice a Warframe. Let's say you have a Mag and a Volt. The ability sacrificed in the Warframe is always the same ability and it cannot be chosen. It cannot be an Oemer ability, nor can it be a unique ability like Necros's Desecrate. All of our abilities in the future, and all of the Warframe's abilities in the future, will be revealed to us as to which Warframe sacrifices which ability. So for Mag, it would actually be her pull, her first ability, and I'm going to want to go to put that on my Vault. I will then subsume the equipped Warframe to the Helminth for the secretions that he needs, and then that Warframe will be killed off. So you will need to refarm some of the Warframes for this, as it isn't really for beginners. Once you subsume a Warframe once, the Helmet learns that Warframe's ability forever, so you won't ever need to sacrifice more of one type of singular Warframe. In this case, he has now learned Mag's pull ability. Once you sacrifice a Warframe, you won't be able to sacrifice another one for about another day or two. You're going to have to wait out for its cooldown. Now from here, you can use the Vault that we selected and we can infuse Mag's pull ability to override and replace any of Vault's abilities you can choose to not want anymore. So you can limit this to the amount of configs you have on a Warframe as well. This way, you don't need to have multiple of one Warframe to have so many different abilities, but instead you can tie that ability that you unlocked, that you subsumed, to a particular build that you already have. So if you wanted it always on config A, for example, then whatever you use config A with the mods, you will always have this ability tied within it. This also includes augments as well, tied within those abilities. However, you cannot substitute a prime warframe, and you can always remove this process if you don't like it. This is pretty crazy, and I cannot wait to see what kind of customizations can come out of this and how metas can change. The Heart of Deimos. Now, this was about a 30-minute-ish kind of demo that they showcased, so I'm going to try and compact this as much as I can. Heart of Deimos is a moon surrounding Mars. This has actually removed and converted the derelict floating ship planet area on the star chart to now a moon of its own. It's fully covered by the infested, with several nodes placed around, and an open infested world called Cambion Drift, which we will mostly be focusing on for the rest of the video. I also noticed that before you enter, you can see the time of day, so there will be changes, and something that has a countdown called FAS, which I'll explain a little later. Entering the area for the first time, you'll be greeted by Lloyd and his multiple personality, Otak. They'll be talking to you about receiving their distress signal for help, and to go ahead and wake up Mother. Now we're going to be helping them against the Grey Strain here on Cambion Drift. The Necrolist is also mentioned. Now this is currently on lockdown, and it is similar to the relays of Cetus and Fortuna, so we want to be making our way there and help out. The remaining Necromechs, which is a new faction of Warframe, have also reverted their state to auto-kill precepts. This basically means that they will attack anyone that they meet. They cannot tell us from friend, friend or foe. These times are very confusing for them. 
looking around the world building music and overall atmosphere is definitely one to be excited for as they enter just a little further in we actually meet the sun worm of deimos or sun moon rather this moon worm is called vome i believe that's what steve said i'm unsure how to spell that and it's actually watching over the landscape and it's important with the interaction of the time of day speaking about fast earlier as we continue to walk around, there appears to be flying fish roaming in the air, just flying freely, in which I would assume can be fished and harvested later in a particular way. There will also be plenty of new resources, floofs, mods, animal conservation, reputations to rank up. It's going to be similar to the previous open worlds, new enemy types and completely new enemies that we haven't met before. There are plenty of hives scattered around to shoot and fight all of these enemies as we introduce them slowly. There are also some flying infested quite low to the ground. You will be able to mount on these just like a K-Drive. And also, you can shoot on them now as well, which is a thing that I think a lot of players have wanted for a long time. So as we can see here, they made their way in towards the Necrolis, which is the Void Research Enclave. And they begin to speak to Mother, an infused Oricon tied with infested, the leader of the Enchardi talking with her about the heart of Deimos and keeping it maintained and alive. Her husband is someone we will be needing to seek out for more help and direction. Now this is mostly going to be the quest line and this is all we got teased of so far. The Enchardi spoke and invented the language of what is how we know the Requiems and the Requiem mods, lich mods like Zartar and Locke, etc. So we can use our operator as we go deeper inside this relay, we can go ahead and find out a lot more about the lore and the language of the Enchardi. Mother can also be found outside of the necklace to talk to and activate bounty missions. Some of these will take you deeper under the surface in a more dangerous territories where areas of the Enchardi have still survived. Here, we can find the remaining Necromax that I mentioned about earlier. It'll be interesting to see what happens with them afterwards. As of right now, they are treating us as a threat to them. So we will have to defend ourselves for now. Stepping outside once again, we do also go ahead and see and meet for the first time, Fass. Now the countdown has arrived and he is not happy with our presence or his sister that we met earlier who was looking over the landscape keeping it peaceful, the Sun Moon Worm. He launches an attack clearing out the Moon Worm and it appears now that enemies are able to roam the surface without any issue, making it far more dangerous. On the floor is a broken necromech and yes, we can enter it. From here onwards, begin the absolute kick-ass we've all been wanting. And with that, Tenacon ends. This Tenacon was an absolute delight to watch live. Again, I echo, this is definitely up there with some of my favorites, along with the Fortuna reveal, and Warframe is taking great steps in the right direction to correct a lot of things, whilst also giving back as well. So shout out to Dee for putting a very well together presentation. If I happen to have gotten any information wrong in here, please correct me. Um, I took as much information as I possibly could, and I wanted to make sure I was as accurate and to keep it as compact as I could. However, I'd like to hear your opinions. How did you find it? What are you looking forward to the most? Let me know down inside the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, it would actually mean an awful lot to me if you could press that like button to help my video reach others and to gain some more traction. On top of that, if you are new to the channel and you wanna stick around for upcoming guides and breakdowns for future Warframe content, then subscribe and hit that bell notification too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm live every week on my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv forward slash show sympathy and I will be catching you guys again in the next video.